Curtis Joseph is a name that causes quite a stir when mentioned in certain magical communities. Some people will take to mocking Curtis, some will challenge anything he shares, and others will listen intently on what it is he's sharing. Needless to say, Curtis Joseph is a controversial figure. But, controversy aside, no one can argue his dedication to the occult, how serious he takes his craft, and what he has contributed to the magic communities he is a part of. One of those contributions came out in 2017 and remains rather prominent still in 2022. And I think it's time that I review said contribution. I'm Melvin, and this is Unexplained Possibilities Reviews Black Magic of Araman, the Ancient Rites, Spells, and Demons of Persia. Black Magic of Araman is 328 pages long that spans across 11 chapters. The introduction to the book does what any good introduction should do draws you in and keeps you curious for what's to come. Curtis describes how he meets Araman in the introduction, and it's a bit disturbing and rather dark, which fits with Araman's theme. Accepting and being comfortable with the uncomfortable, among other things. This was easily one of the better introductions I've read in a book like this. However, there is a shift I wasn't expecting. The shift being that this is a grimoire, one that talks about counter-creation as well as tutelage on how to perform various rituals. This was quite surprising for me. Despite this, Curtis is still able to tell his story and experiences as well as relaying messages he receives from Arlman and the beings that serve him. The book is extremely well written and you can tell that time and dedication went into this. It doesn't feel rushed at all. The illustrations by Robert W. Cook are a nice touch and give a good visual on the various representation for some of the beings talked about. There's also colored text used to differentiate quotes or if it's a message from the divs and also what you're supposed to say during a ritual. This is a small thing, but it's a greatly appreciated one. As many no doubt already know, there are some books you can speed read and understand easily. Sometimes you can even skip around and still not miss a beat. The same cannot be said about this book. While Black Magic of Araman is well written, it can be a difficult read. There are concepts being introduced that aren't very common among the occult and magic community. Trying to understand the various figures associated with Zoroastrian is quite difficult as well, and it's so much information that an overload can possibly occur. The information is presented neatly though, but because of its nature, it can be hard to understand. There is no true way of making this any simpler without losing something in the process. I had to reread through some of the chapters several times. The information presented isn't in a used car salesman sort of way either. The rituals given take time and dedication. If you want a quick fix or something that requires little effort, then you'll have to look elsewhere. Even the prepping for the rituals take time and in some ways requires a rewiring of your thought process. However, there is a method that got me questioning a couple of things and that had to do with staring into the sun. Taken out of context, this sounds like a bad idea. It was explained that you're looking into the sun at sunset where it is safe to do so. I did research on this and apparently you can look at the sun somewhat discreetly during a sunset and sometimes a sunrise when the light is at its most orange. 
However, I'd still be cautious about it. Along with that, there are several other rituals, and I'm not naming all of them, that Curtis will take you through. The Nexion of Infernal Power, creating the talisman of counter-creation, walking you through the path of smoke, and even creating a potion known as the Venoms of the Black Sun. What can also be found are the 101 names of Angra Menu, as well as their meanings and names and sigils of the divs and their purposes if you'd like to work with them. If you prefer something more simple, Curtis includes candle work that can be done. I would say that the candle magic is more beginner friendly, but still requires a lot of devotion. After finishing reading, I felt like I was missing something. I didn't feel complete, and something was going over my head. I found myself thinking about Zohak, Ahura Mazda, Dihak, Araman, and trying to figure out what it was that didn't click. Upon rereading, it hit me. This book is more than teaching some rituals or talking about ancient deities. It's about breaking yourself down and resisting a false reality, not bending to the will of establishment, whether it's government, religion, or even yourself. What you learn from this is how to accept your evil, your darkness, and change yourself. And by changing yourself, you change up your magic and it becomes more powerful. The rituals found in this book are defiant in nature, going against a false creator and a false light. Awakening and seeing yourself as an equal to the very God who put fear in you and says you're a servant. What this book is, this black magic of Araman, is anarchy. Anarchy of magic, anarchy of the person, anarchy of the soul, not allowing any type of authority figure to imprison your free will. Funnily enough, a byproduct of reading this helped me understand Curtis a little more than I already did. He's taken in that essence of Araman, that seeing beyond the light, knowing and accepting that hidden darker aspect of ourselves. Perhaps this translates as him coming off more intimidating than he intends, but that's what happens when you venture into the domain of evil and stare it in the eyes unflinchingly. You see things differently, you experience things differently, and it's no way to properly convey the message you received without looking a little evil and intimidating yourself. Black Magic of Araman is a very eye-opening read, albeit difficult, and I wouldn't recommend this grimoire for someone who is freshly new into the occult. Even though the instructions for rituals are laid out in a way for anyone to perform, they're heavy, and I don't think someone new to this will have the mental fortitude to handle what's being taught. I also wouldn't recommend this for someone who has an established practice unless they're ready to unlearn all that they have learned. I feel that Black Magic of Araman is perfect for those who have dabbled in the occult and have a basic understanding of occult workings, but not on any particular path. This is certainly not for someone going through mental hardships as well. The practices found in Black Magic of Araman are meant to break you down and build you back up. Someone without strong mental fortitude or some sort of mental handicap probably won't make it. One of my favorite aspects of this book is how intrigued it got me to learn more about Zoroastrianism something I had limited knowledge on before reading. And I think that's where the greatest strength lies in Black Magic of Araman. Its ability to not only draw you in, but keep you intrigued and wanting to know more and more about these mysterious beings. 
And while I do chuckle at some of the edgy names of the rituals, I can say this is very much worth the read, even if you have no intention of doing magic. You'll come away a little more knowledgeable, questioning supposed authority, and maybe a little more evil. Because of this, Black Magic of Ahriman gets four Crimson Stars out of five. Thank you all for watching, and if you have a suggestion for a future review, please let us know in the comment section down below or tell us on social media, and those links can be found in the description. Thank you all once more, and I will be seeing you next time.